You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. disrespect his wife his companion by um, stepping outside of the relationship and fornicating with other women or committing adultery with other women it's automatically the woman who feels that she has failed him it's automatically that woman who feels that she has not done something right and she automatically feels some sense of responsibility for her uh, her cheating her cheating man's actions and even though we know it's not our fault it's still that psychological it's still that, that psychological um fault of us blaming ourselves like maybe I wasn't attractive enough maybe I was not pretty enough maybe I was not you know sexually adventurous enough we'll sit up here and blame ourselves for everything you know when whenever a man makes that decision you know and in many cases some of these men will have the audacity to make you feel like Martell did with um, Melody that it was something she did not do and this is definitely a, a strong red flag of gaslighting and deflecting and being manipulative. Because in order for me not to own um, where I fail as a man, where I don't feel worthy as a man, I will seek companionship. I will seek, no, not companionship. I will seek sexual perverse fulfillment from a hood harlot or a, a Jezebel in order to feel whole as a man versus putting all of that energy into just one woman. So, men who conduct themselves in this manner, most of the time are men who lack a high amount of low self-esteem. Meaning, it does not matter as a wife how sexually adventurous you are. It does not matter as his fiance, his companion, uh, how uh, sexy you are, how well together you um, keep yourself. You, you buy all these um, luxurious lingeries. You try to spice it up, keep it spicy, keep it interesting. Um, you, you're studying all of these different sexual um, escapade so you can learn to be more open and, and, and learn to you know be more adventurous when you're dealing with a man that has lack of self-esteem his penis is automatically going to be led by the demon in other words because he does not feel whole as a man he's going to automatically turn to any of these demonic devices to make himself feel whole and if one of those demonic devices are another harlot another woman whose self-esteem is just not low just as low if not lower than his then that is what he's going to do so um a man who does not value himself can easily be led by his penis Period, point blank. No more than a woman who has to sleep with multiple men or a woman who has to sleep with somebody else's husband. That's a, 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 a big, very strong indication that you lack self-worth. And when I say lack self-worth, 
it's important to understand that low self-esteem is not just a woman's disease. Because when we hear about low self-esteem, we automatically want to associate it with a woman's emotions. When the truth is, men have emotions just like women do. The only difference is they process their emotions differently. We may cry about it. We may, you know, uh, uh, seek uh, attention from other men to fulfill it. And so do men. Men who seek, men who, who uh, lack self-value, they will seek fulfillment in other things to make them feel more, more value. Okay? So a man who does not feel worthy, he is easily led by his penis. The demon will manipulate him into believing that um, if you want to feel like a real man, you have to uh, sleep with multiple women. You have to step outside of your marriage, step outside of your relationship. Only for them to find out that no matter how many times they sleep with multiple women, or no matter how many times they have been smashing the same bird brain for years. Ariana, Air, Ariana Air Mattress and Martel, perfect example. He still will never feel whole. He will never feel whole. Because what people do not understand is the flesh could never be fed. The fle You can't feed the flesh enough. I don't care how many different positions. I don't care of um, how many multiple women. It will still never be enough to make you feel whole as a man. You're going to always be seeking more. Just like they tell the, the, not that I know that not that I personally have experienced this but like they say for people who have tried crack or cocaine for the first time you go back trying to seek that same type of high you keep thinking that the more crack you do you're going to experience that very first high not understanding that because you have had and consumed so much of that substance you, you, it no longer stimulates you the same way it did when you first experimented with it you have to realize whenever you experiment with that with, with a drug substance it, it brings a different effect on the body because it's totally foreign is new to the body so that's why a lot of of drug abusers and drug users will tell you you keep trying to get that same high but no matter how much of it you smoke no matter how much of it you inhale or you snort whatever method you use to inject this drug you're never going to get that same high and that is the same way sexual perversion operates yes it felt great that first time because you have to realize the going to a mind of a man when you've been with your wife for let's say for five to seven years you have gotten used to her smell you have become accustomed to her moans her groans you have, you have basically built and developed a, a sexual intimacy that has bonded and, 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 and solidified the marriage. Just like as a wife who um, is, is regularly intimate with her husband, you have, um, you have, have gotten used to how, how you, uh, you, you basically got used to how he is, is stimulated, basically. You know what turns him on. You know his facial expressions when he has climaxed. Um, you know um, he has climaxed based on his response and his moans and his groans and how he, he, he um, 
holds you a certain way or grabs you a certain way when he has reached his sexual peak. So in a marriage, you've learned to develop, you've, you've learned each other's sexual body language. Okay? And like anything else, when you have been in anything for years, whether it's been a job, you've been on the same job for 10 years, whether, uh, you know, you, you've been, um, um, doing your own business for 10 years a certain way, you become accustomed to the way things are. At, at that point, you either become bored or either you realize, you know what, I have to experiment and, and introduce our our marriage to something to, to something else something more fulfilling maybe we need to try different positions maybe we need to invest in and in, in go into the sex shop and getting you know um, motion lotion and, and anything to help stimulate the marriage or whatever when you have become accustomed especially if you are with a man who has not yet to conquer the flesh who has not battled the flesh he indeed will seek sexual pleasure from elsewhere not because something is wrong with his wife not because just your you know uh your weight gain and all of this but this is something the enemy will tell them in their minds to make them believe they need to seek sexual pleasure from elsewhere it all starts with the mind it starts with the the enemy um, uh, co constantly attacking them and where they are weak and if they are still fighting the flesh with their sexual demons it will not take much for the demon to manipulate them into first starting with his mind making him feel as if what he has something is wrong with it the enemy will tell him you know uh, you've been with this woman a, a really long time She's just not as uh, um, attractive as she first was when y'all started off. You know, she's not that adventurous. And especially if he's a man that's still into porn. Um, all of those, that that even more so, will, will uh, mentally sabotage how he perceives you sexually as his wife. Because the truth of the matter is, porn is... Is nothing but delusions. Let me pause and um, put in my scripture here. Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 8. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the, which gratify the, the flesh. Let me read that again because I'm butchering up words, y'all. I can't read today. For those who are according to the flesh... And are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit and are controlled by the desires of the spirit, set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. So basically, if you have a man who is still entertaining the flesh, like Martel was steadily entertaining the flesh. You're not just going to entertain it in one area and not entertain it in, a, in another area. I sense the spirit that Martel is into porn. I have that spirit. I, I, just, I just feel that vibe coming from him. Uh, Martel is a highly perverse, overly sexual driven man. And it's a lot of men out here who carry that same flesh of sexual perversion. Okay? So... Anytime you're dealing with a man that's into porn, even though it may seem harmless, some men may mentally watch porn and not allow it to affect how they connect with you in the bedroom spiritually. But you have others who are, 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 are who, who definitely lack discipline, and I mean that dick, not dis, discipline, who can easily be manipulated from porn, okay? Um... Realistically, porn gives men gives men delusional expectations because the truth of the matter is a lot of these porn stars are getting paid 
for what they do. And a lot of these women that are porn stars, I watched a lot of the interviews, they tell you and they admit that they're not getting near as much pleasure as the men are. Let me keep it 100. And I might lose some brownie points. If you ever study any porn, if you, I don't mean study. If you ever viewed or watch any porn, because I used to watch it a lot. Just putting it out there. Um, if you really notice, you rarely ever see the women climax. Notice it's always the men. Really think about it. Now, you holier than thou sisters, y'all might want to close your ears for this and go open the Bible because you're so religious. You never, you never, you don't partake in that type of demonic stuff. That's just, that's just so devilish. I don't do no porn. I talk about what you do now. Maybe you did it back then. Nevertheless, notice women, the, I, I rarely ever see women climax in porn. It's always been the men because women are used as demonic devices in the porn industry. We are just there to, to please the man. We are what they call props. Like if you go to a Tyler Perry play and you see how they have the background with the walls and the furniture, you know, the decorations on the stage. Women have always been known to be props in porn. We're not, in other words, they could care less about a woman's pleasure. They can care less if the woman climaxes or not. It's about the man climaxing. That is what makes the scene when a man can, you know, explode. So you will, if that's an appropriate way of saying it. That, that's what makes the porn, that, that is the, um, that, that is the, the, the main storyline, if you will. I'm trying to keep this as clean as I can keep it. But at the same time, I got to keep it a book. Okay? So, back to my point at hand. Because I know I'm digressing. When you have a man who still entertains the flesh, the enemy will get in his mind and make him find all type of fault with his wife. Which is supposed to be a blessing because God gave them this wife. God has put a covenant on their marriage. But once he allows the enemy to infiltrate him and, and penetrate his mind mentally and spiritually, he will find fault. His mind will tell him, my wife is born. His mind will tell him, my wife don't put on his weight. weight. His mind will tell him all of these things. So what tends to happen is, once the mind begins to lead, slowly but surely, it starts feeding into the heart. It starts sending signals to your heart for you to desire fleshly, ungodly things that you should not be desiring. That you should not be seeking. This is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God. For it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, meaning catering to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature. In other words, they start to submit to the flesh instead of submitting to the spirit. They said those who start catering to the appetite and to the flesh cannot please or satisfy, satisfy God or be acceptable to him. And all of this is also in Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 8. It's from that very scripture. So when you start entertaining the flesh, the enemy starts, starts to um, take control of the mind. To now you're finding fault in everything. Now that it has already um, taken over the mind, now it's infiltrating the heart. Now you are building a desire. Because once something starts um, developing in your heart, once something uh, ungodly uh, or fleshly starts to enter to the heart, now here comes the desire. Once you desire something, what do you do when you desire? You start to seek it. Notice how it's gone now from just thinking it 
to desiring it. Now you have to pursue it. So this is what ends up happening when the, the man who, who, who is now catering to his flesh, he starts allowing the demon to lead his dick. So now he's going, go, hanging out in places, going in environments that is, is, is going to provide the very thing he's pursuing. This is why he's going to the bars as a married man. This is why he's going to the clubs. This is why he's going places he shouldn't go because now he he has fed the thought so he, he has entertained the thought so long. Now he has to go and act on it and seek it. He has to fulfill that upper time. Let me tell you something. If you think about a cheeseburger long enough, all of us in here have done it. Have you ever was craving like a cheeseburger? Or, or a glazed donut, something sweet, like, oh, man, I just, I, I'm really craving some cheesecake. I'm really craving some cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory. I want that red velvet cheesecake. Listen, when my when my sweet tooth gets on a mission, I go full force. When I start craving something, I got to get it, okay? That is the same, That 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 is not just with food. That is with sexual perversion once it's in your mind that you have to be on 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 um not not that you are on the mission of prowling and by nature men are hunters by nature so that that is in their nature to hunt to be on a hunt until they capture their prey. So what what the what the what the fleshly earthly man does, he starts hanging out in these environments in which he's looking to capture his prey. So here he is at the club, or here he is hanging out with some fellows. Nine times out of man, nine times out of ten, another thing. A man it, his spirit is not going to agree with hanging out with other men who are not doing what he does. So, point in case, Martel hanging around Maurice, Marceau, the, even though they still have their wives, it does not mean they did not share the same sexual perverse desires that Martel did. Because a man who is really and, and deeply in the spirit, he's not going to hang in the company of other men who uh, are, are still within the flesh. So even though Marceau or Maurice, uh, none of their uh, skeletons got exposed as heavily as Martel, and even though as far as we know, no children was created outside their marriages, it does not make them more or less innocent than Martel because you have to realize these men have been hanging with each other very heavily. And birds of a feather, flock together like my grandfather used to say you can't sit around people a group of people who all of them smoking cigarettes and you don't start smelling like a cigarette that fume gonna rub off on you so in other words fleshly men are going to keep the company of other fleshly men i know me if i'm a married woman i'm not I'm, my spirit is not going to lead me to feel comfortable about around other married women who are no are, are being whoremongers who are being jezebels cheating and messing around on their husbands, I'm not going to feel comfortable entertaining or being in the company of women who conduct themselves, of married women who conduct themselves in that manner when I'm a married woman. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to let you know that now. So, anyway, you know, you, you have these, you know, th these men, you know, who find it acceptable to be in, in company. And also, Matt, Marceau and Maurice, they was right. If they knew what Martel was doing, they wouldn't want to be around him either. So that lets you know a lot about their character. And a lot of bloggers have spoken on this. So you meet this woman, you exchange phone numbers, and you're already stepping out of pocket once you are holding a conversation. The moment Martel started 
holding a conversation with Arion. First of all, the flesh led him directly to her due to the fact that her flesh was just as 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 open as his. The devil is going to lead you to other devils. He's not going to lead you to somebody that's not going to um go on a demonic assignment with you. So, in other words, anytime a man steps outside of his marriage or a woman steps outside of her marriage, nine out of ten, make no mistake about it, the devil has already sent somebody out on assignment. Once he puts once he puts it in alignment. He sends someone out on assignment. In other words, once he puts it into your thoughts as a man that you're not being pleased as a husband, your, your, your wife is no longer sexually pleasing you. Once he puts that thought in alignment, now here comes the Jezebel or the hood of harlot he sends on assignment. Both go hand in hand. So you're already crossing the line by being in an environment in which you should not be. No married man or woman. She'd be at no bar or no place where there's a lot of single, um, starving um, 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 predators out there that's looking to be captured, okay? So, one thing leads to another. You exchange numbers, and now you're entertaining that flesh. You have started that process of, of entertaining the flesh. Now the flesh is slowly but surely having its way with the man or the woman who is inappropriately doing things outside of the marriage that they should not be doing. So, on that note, as time goes on, this man has to wear two hats. He has to still put on that hat of performing, being a husband, and at the same time, he also um, has to put on the hat of being the male Jezebel when he steps outside of his household late at night to sneak and creep with the harlot, who he does not know is going to cost him everything in the end, who's going to destroy him. So nevertheless, now it has transformed from conversation to temptation to sexual relation. You entertain something long enough, you're eventually going to cross a line to the point of no return. And that is what happened with Martel. He kept Hanging around the harlot. Having conversation with the harlot. And this is why I have a problem with people who see absolutely nothing wrong. Especially married people or people that are supposed to be in a committed relationship. They see nothing wrong with holding a conversation with the opposite sex. My thing is, if you got to hide it from your significant other, that's already a red flag that maybe you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Because if I have a male friend and he's really just my friend, I shouldn't have a problem with my husband knowing who he is. I shouldn't have a problem with my husband um, coming out to lunch with the both of us and he bringing his wife or his fiance. Anytime you have to hide it, your intentions already are not right. If you're if you're having lunch or are you sneaking or are you are you having conversations with a man and your significant other or your woman does not know about it you 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 already are putting yourself in the danger zone something is wrong why are you trying to hide it are you trying to psych yourself out and make yourself believe no we're just going to be friends i'm not going to cross that line are you trying to lie to yourself and make yourself believe that you don't have these inappropriate desires well apparently you do if you have to hide it or if you're having lunch with this person and your husband and your wife calls, you have to turn off the ringer. Why you could not answer that phone with that man or that woman being there? Because you know why? You're letting the flesh lead you. But we're going to stay on one chapter. We're talking about the men in this aspect. So, a lot of times, God would allow a lot of things to happen to, to, to kind of pull you by your tail. 
You know, I've, I've psychologized. I've had men who reach out to me. I've, I've done counseling sessions with them where I would ask them, wasn't there signs that you was taking it too far, that it was getting out of hand? And I've had many of them admit to me and said, well, yeah, one time my wife called right before I was getting ready to go in this woman's apartment and something told me right then. I did not need to take it any further. Now, keep in mind, the, the Lord also makes a way to escape temptation. He also provides an escape to tem from temptation. As Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. In other words, you're not the first, you're not the last that's going to be tempted with something that other people haven't already been tempted with. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. In other words, he's not going to give you a test that you're not capable of passing. He's not going to put, give you a challenge that you in no shape or form does not have the mental or spiritual capacity to be able to conquer. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you will be able to endure it. Trust and believe, Martel had plenty of time, plenty of opportunities to pull out from under um, Arion Air Mattress. He had plenty of close, call, close calls, even with the multiple abortions that she paid for. other words all this what well, i didn't know i didn't mean to do it you had plenty of time to know you was stepping way out there all the red flags was there but you allowed the demon to lead your genitals the spirit was telling you you don't need to be here you don't need to be involved with this woman. But the flesh is telling you, this is what I want. This is what I deserve. This is what I desire. The flesh is selfish now. The flesh is very selfish. The flesh going to tell you, this is how I want it. And this is what I'm going to do to get it. So what tends to happen is, when the married man begins to fornicate with the harlot, now, what has happened is he has developed a sexual bond. He is building a soul tie with this woman. So now what tends to happen is he's finding everything wrong with the wife because now he has gained or collected a new spirit based off the fact that he has encountered, uh, uh, he has, it's kind of like this. Once you ride the bicycle, you'll never forget how to ride a bicycle, even if you never ride one again. So once you learn something, you can't unlearn it. In other words, now that he has become accustomed to this woman's vagina, now that he's become accustomed to her moans, to to her uh, sexual pleasures that she provides to him. Now that he has tasted something different, it has tainted the purity of his marriage. It's no different than an innocent child whose innocence has been tampered with by a sexually perverse demon, a, chi a child molester. That child would never be normal. Because their, 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 their innocence has been uh, ambushed. Once a child has been touched inappropriately by an adult, no matter how much counseling or medication that child gets, they cannot unlearn the damage that was done with a grown man or a grown woman touching, f f touching them, um, um, penetrating them in an inappropriate manner, it is forever in their minds. 
You don't have a grown man as a child climb on top of you and penetrate you and, and not forever damage your mental or your spiritual psyche. That is, and I hate to use that example, but that is the same way it works when a man steps outside of his marriage and he begins to fornicate and have sexual relations with other women. That new experience has tainted the purity of his marriage because now he has defiled his marital bed. So, now that you have become used to the moans of the harlot, the harlot has, has, has overly invested her body in, in, in this demonic twist of events to where now it has mentally made you find fault And something that was supposed to be a blessing, which was your wife within your marriage. Now everything is wrong. Because th that, that's how the succubus operates. What a lot of men do not understand about side chicks is that not only even what they think, a lot of men think that they are the ones getting over, that they're the ones that are that are getting sexually fulfilled, they're the ones that are winning. But what they're not understanding is the succubus, her job is to fulfill you and deliver you with all of your sexual desires just so she can destroy you. A succubus is an imaginary demon assuming female form and formerly held to have sexual intercourse with men. While you're thinking every time you climax in this woman, every time you climax as a married man into the harlot, you thinking that you are sexually pleasuring yourself but what you don't realize is you're depositing your spirit into the succubus the harlot and every time you deposit something in her while you think it's your nut you think it's your sperm what you're doing is you're depositing your spirit which in turn is going to cost you because it's draining you every time you empty yourself into a woman that is not your wife. You are also losing a part of you. If you do not notice how Martel has lost everything. See, what he's not understanding is it's it's harving season. It's harving. Ha, ha, what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm saying the wrong word. It's it's reaping season. Okay. It's reaping season, meaning you it's karma. That's collecting. He's not realizing every time he deposited himself in Arion, that was a deduction from the blessing. Lord have mercy. Yes, yes. Now the spirit just told me that. This is getting deep. That's why I had to share this content for everybody. Every time he entered inside Arion, that was a, a point deducted from his blessings. Why do you think he's been losing? Y'all don't just look at it from a, a physical aspect of he lost his cars. He, 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 he lost a place to stay. He lost his law. It's, it's bigger than that. Once he broke that covenant, that and lost his marriage, that was the first biggest deduction. And what Martel does not understand, he signed a deal with the devil. A lot of these married men don't understand the, 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 the enemy's job is to kill, steal, destroy. And that is what the harlot, the succubus, that is her, that is what the devil has assigned her to do. 
He sent her on a mission. So why, so why the man, why the married man is indulging in his flesh? He's not understanding that the enemy has already sent the harlot on assignment to take to to take a part to to play the role and in participating in the, in the uh in the mission of destroying him. Because by nature, God has designed the man to lead. What better way to destroy a union than, than to destroy the lead, the, the leader of that union? By nature, men, husbands are supposed to lead. So once the enemy has conquered that husband by using the harlot, the succubus, on a mission to play into his flesh, which he was already entertaining all along, now the enemy has conquered his mission. Once he, once the enemy was able to infiltrate on Martel's weaknesses, which he thought was really his ego, the very thing that Martel based his ego on was the very thing that destroyed him. His ego was through his penis. You have a lot of men, not men of God, men of flesh, meaning men who entertain the flesh, who enter, entertain things of the world. And all this time, Martel had himself believing he was the man. All this time he had himself believing that, that he was powerful through his penis. That was the very thing that ended up costing him everything. His penis became the demise of his blessings. This is what happens when you allow the demon to lead the dick. And that's what he did. Every time he slept with Arion and what he's not. And I told y'all this on my, on my last, one of my last videos, I, my last content. I don't know if you ladies remember, but remember when I told y'all by, by the eyes of God, Martel is still not, Martel is still not supposed to be sleeping with Arion. God is still holding him accountable, still fornicating with this woman. He thinks because Mel has divorced him. That has given him a free pass to continue keep fornicating with Arion. And he's not putting the pieces together. He's still losing. Now he's facing some foreclosure with um where he's staying. His, his, his luck just keeps derailing. And he is not putting the pieces together because he's still within the flesh. If he was submitting to the spirit and not the flesh, the spirit would have told him long time ago to leave the concubine, the hood harlot, the Arion air mattress. If he was in the spirit, he would have left her long, long time ago. Just because you had a child from this woman, just because your wife divorced you, it does not give you full access to still have sexual relations and fornicate with the succubus. Because she, she already drained you of your marriage, Martel. And what you're not realizing is because you're still fornicating with the devil, you're going to continue to lose. The only way he's going to halfway get it right, he's going to have to stop sleeping with Arion. But because his self-esteem is so low, he'd rather hold on to something that's still damaging him just, just to make himself feel like he has some type of masculinity. But that is what happens when the dick is led by the demon. It will, it, first of all, like I said, the enemy plays on a man with low self-esteem. The enemy targets the man who finds masculinity through his manhood, through his man parts, through his penis. Martel is the weakest link. He cannot survive. He does not feel like a man unless he has a woman somewhere around him. Why you think he keeps stepping outside even after Mar after even after Melody has divorced him? He keeps picking up women like toys because that's all they are to him. But how many of us know that even toys can only keep your attention for but so long? 
For instance, if you have a kid or a baby, you buy them a toy, they'll be in love with that toy for a little while. But eventually, they get tired of that toy and they want to play with other toys. This is what happens with the flesh. That's why Martel is going to stay derailing. He's not understanding that he's entertaining the flesh. And like I said, the flesh, you can never feed it enough. You can't satisfy the flesh. You can't conquer the flesh. The flesh is going to say, I want more, I want more, I want more. Flesh is going to keep you yearning and desiring for more. You can never satisfy flesh. That's why it's important that when you realize the flesh is, is has, has wholeheartedly taken over, you have to be a man or woman of God and realize you need to get within the spirit. Until he submits to the spirit, he's going to stay out on the prowl. We're going to hear about him with different women. We're going to hear about him losing this, losing that. We're going to hear about all of his troubles. Because he's not understanding. He has sealed the deal with the devil. And one thing about, let, let me tell you how the devil works. The devil, he works like a loan shark. Like a lot of times we watch these mafia movies. Uh, and Goodfellas was definitely one of my favorite uh, mafia movies. I love Goodfellas. And I love, um, I like King of New York and um, A Bronx Tale. I love mafia stuff. Okay, that's my thing. Anybody got any good mafia movies to recommend? Put in the comment section because I need to find something to watch for the weekend. But anyway, when you have some of these individuals who get a favor from, from uh, uh, somebody in a big mob, uh, a big mafia dude, and they don't pay that, that, that uh, mafia dude off in time, what tends to happen is either he's going to one, unalive him or two give him time and say but guess what it's going to cost you double and you're going to owe the mafia so much money to the point you'll you'll never feel like you could buy them out you could buy them off that is the same way the devil works once you have taken out ritual and part of the ritual martel took was stepping outside of his marriage and it's a lot of men, Kevin Hunter, a lot of them, who have taken that ritual. They have sealed the deal with the devil. So, the, the way the enemy works, he will give you what your heart desires. Just like uh, uh, if, if, you're so, if you're struggling and you approach one of the mafia dudes and say, Look, I need $200,000. I'm in a bind. I'm about to lose everything or whatever. The idea of them giving you the money sounds great. Sure. We'll be glad to. We'll look out for you. We'll give you the money. But the bad part about it is once you screw up or you mess up, you're going to have to pay back triple with interest. And the peace of mind you're going to lose behind it is not worth the instant reward. Because the consequences that's coming behind it is going to be detrimental. So yes, even though th this mafia is willing to give you 200000 but if you don't pay that money back exactly the way you got it, they're going to put a hit out on you. Or you're going to be owing them for the rest of your life. Either way, the outcome is going to be miserable. This is what happens when you sign the deal with the devil. In the beginning, he will make you feel like you are, you are um, benefiting from the temporary pleasures. And once you have uh, obtained the, the, the temporary pleasures, now here comes the long-term punishment behind the pleasures. The punishment is going to always outweigh the pleasure. I always tell men and women, even those who have taken my anger management class, you can all, you can, at the end of the day, you can do what you want to do. Nobody can tell you as a grown man or a grown woman what not to do. But 
What you're not going to be able to choose is the consequences or the outcome. You will never be able to control the outcome. Martel, like most selfish, fleshly-minded individuals, he didn't look past the moment. He looked at the instant gratification. He met Arianne, saw she was young, saw that she was attractive, and he took the bait. He signed the deal with the devil, which was, I'm willing to lose everything just for 15 minutes of pleasure. I'm willing to throw away seven, eight years for 15 minutes of pleasure. And some of the men that I have counseled, most of them said they regret. They damn the day and damn the hour. And even Martel has admitted he regrets it. But this is what happens. Once you sign the deal with the devil, you got to keep, you. he's going to keep you beholden to that. Even Martel can't really figure out. He can't give you a straight answer on why he's still dealing with Arianne. Even he knows, because he said it, it was a detrimental mistake. And he really don't have a purpose for her right now. He can't leave her alone because, unfortunately, he signed the deal. He signed the contract with the devil. And when the devil has used Arianne to drain him of everything, then in due time, he's going to remove one or the other. Or the devil may have so much fun with it, he may make it a lifetime warranty to where they both stay miserable with each other for the rest of their lives. Stuff out here is real. People don't believe in spirits. People don't believe in in the in the, how the devil sends his his his, his, de, his the demonic soldiers on a mission as an assignment to your life. And if you are in the spirit, you will identify when the devil is is, is sending someone on assignment to destroy you, to test you, or to bless you. You got to be in the spirit to know if the enemy is sending someone to test you or to bless you. It's going to be one or the other. Martel and any married man who is, who is feeding the flesh, entertaining the succubus, allowing the, the enemy, allowing the devil to lead their genitals. They're signing up for a lifetime of, of misery and pain. Martel has not figured it out. He's not trying to figure it out. He's around here going at everything, but what he need to be going at is the word of God. He hasn't figured it out yet. And the more... The more Martel keeps bucking God, that's the more he's going to continue to lose. Listen, I don't know who this word is for. If too many things keep going wrong in your life, back to back to back to back, we all have trials and tribulations, and it does rain on the just as well as the unjust. But if you are in a situation in which it's been nothing but L's, back to back to back, you're going to have to really sit down and do some spiritual soul searching and reflect on what you have done to other people or how you have tried to destroy others for all of these L's to keep coming back at you. Comes a point where you got to humble yourself, get down on your knees and get right with God and ask him, what can you do to get this heat off of you? Because once the wrath of God comes into play. That that That's not something. You can't put a restraining order out on God. <laughs> you can't go to the police precinct and say, look, you know, um, I, I'm tired of the Lord punishing me. I'm tired of the Lord attacking me, coming after me. I'm tired of the Lord making me learn my lesson. I want to put a restraining order out. You cannot get rid of how God will deal with you for the things that you have done. Look at all these marriages that's getting exposed. All of these divorces. 
It's a lot of individuals not living in their truth. And they think they can hide their truth from, with their money, with their celebrity status, with their image. And God is allowing all of this to happen, not just to, not just so we can use it as um, breaking news on our content. It's a bigger picture. God wants us to stop idolizing these relationships. Stop idolizing these individuals. Stop idolizing these celebrities. Celebrity goals, couples goals. I don't believe in none of that. Because we're seeing more and more every day. We're seeing the Will and Jada Pickett's, you know. We're seeing the Steve Harvey and Marjorie. A lot of these people are not living up to what they are presenting to us. A lot of these people are serving Satan. A lot of these people are, are worshiping the devil. They are in their own demonic world. And you're so asphyxiated on their looks their celebrity status and their money that you tend to overlook how how um spiritually poor a lot of these individuals are yes you can be wealthy and riches but you can be poor in the spirit which one is going to count more there's no valet parking in heaven but this is what has happened martel has invited this demon and to his life. It's not even about his marriage anymore because his marriage is gone. He's steadily losing. We're hearing more about him than we're hearing about Melody. We keep hearing these constant downfalls because he keeps entertaining a succubus. He's still sleeping with Arion. He's still going to her section of the apartment, smashing her out because he's trying to fulfill that hole um, by sexually still being involved with Arion. And not understanding every time he lays, lays up with this woman. That's another loss. That's a God just keeps deducting, 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 deducting his blessings. Because he has not repented. He still doesn't believe he did anything wrong with Melody. And God is going to make sure he makes him pay for it. He marks out to pay for it before, during, and after the marriage. God's wrath is not over. And whenever you allow the dick to be led by the demon, this is what happens. The Lord will put your downfall on stage as an example for all other married men out there who don't see anything wrong with it. He's going to use somebody as an example. So nevertheless, I thought it was imperative that I share this content because it's a lot of women out here who are struggling and not understanding their worth. And a lot of the times you have to realize when you are involved with the man who does not understand his value, does not understand his real purpose in life that the Lord has given him other than just to use his penis, other than just to use his masculinity and ego, he will easily fall into temptation with the flesh. You have to be in the spirit in order not um, to become prey to the flesh. Put it this way, you have to pray P-R-A to be in the spirit so you don't become prey to the flesh. Oh, that's a good one. Somebody can put that in the comment section. You have to pray to be in the spirit so you don't become prey to be in the flesh. So on that note, y'all, if I feel like I need to do a part two, I will do a part two on when the dick is led by the demon. So nevertheless, y'all, leave y'all comment below. Let me know what y'all think about today's sermon and if there's something y'all feel like i needed to address let me know if there was any points or any other issues you thought i could have addressed um, in this particular content let me know so that way i can do a part two but you know i got some more content coming up also fyi i have an anger management class coming up in october i got one for october 5th I got one for October 9th and one for October 12th. Now, if you are interested in joining my free anger management class, yep, October 5th, 12th, and 19th, all are on a Thursday. 
All are going to be at 6 o'clock for one hour. If anybody's interested, send an email to anonymous by choice 79 at yahoo.com. Okay? Um, if you can remember, send it to that email. Um, that way I will be able to um, find it quicker. But if you decide to sit in the Cafe de Paris 79, that's fine. Make sure you put in the subject line, anger management. I am allowing up to 15, well, I think at this point I got like 12 spaces open. For anyone who's interested in joining my anger management class, don't get me wrong. I think entertainment... I think keeping up with everything, with these reality shows and all of that is fun. And I know gossip is entertaining. I know celebrity news is 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 wonderful. But at the same time, I want women for us to be spirit, spiritually healthy. And it's important that we invest into our mental, just like we do into all the entertainment. We need to invest and our peace of mind and our mental stability. So that is why I am offering at no charge free one hour anger management session you don't have to pay a dime all you do is send an email let me know which one of those three dates you want that way when the time gets near i will send you a link the day before you join me and it's not going to be no pre-recorded it's going to be live conversation and interaction so no you're not just going to be sitting there and listening to me lecture for like an hour or so we're going to actually talk about anger management okay because now i am a certified anger management counselor specialist so i definitely want to utilize this gift especially for those of you who have been supporting me so this is nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed about or you got so much pride and ego if you know you're struggling with anger management issues why not take this opportunity okay this ain't about who's looking at you it will be confidential so whatever we share in the sessions i'm not going to use it um uh um in any of my lives or anything or whatever if i do it'll be like a small snippet and I won't share any information as far as for advertisement purposes. But it's not going to be nothing to where people are going to be able to figure out and know who you are. So I'm definitely going to keep the information confidential. So join me. I'm doing up to five people per class. Okay. So if you're interested, um, send me the email so I can sign you up. And you can join and hang out. Because um, it's very necessary. And a lot of women, we are dealing and battling with anger. Um, management and it's very important that we learn how to manage that anger so if you are interested send me the email so i can register you sign you up again i only got 12 spots left after 12 spots i'm shutting it down and i'm not doing it again until god knows when but uh nevertheless if you are interested and you want me to help you send an email so i can register you okay so nevertheless y'all take care don't forget i still sell cable $25 a month over 10,000 channels. Hit me up if you're interested. You got to have an Amazon stick. If you don't have an Amazon stick, you could buy the Amazon stick from me. I also make cups, t shirts. You got any special events coming up? You can email me as well as Cafe de Paris 79 at yahoo.com. Before you leave, hit that like button right now. It only takes two seconds. I appreciate it because I need to push my videos in the algorithms. There's more women that need this type of content. So make sure y'all do that for me. Other than that, y'all have a wonderful day. I'm going to get ready to shut it down. It is your diva in knowledge. Lady Mocha representing Mocha's Ladies Lounge. Y'all be blessed. Take care. Stay in the word and stay in God. Y'all have a good one.